what's up guys, Krister here, and today I'll be sharing some facts and tips on shooting D-Log with your DJI drones. Please note that this may only be applicable to the Phantom Line and the Mavic. Although it may be similar, I could not speak for the Inspire 1 and 2 because I have not had ample time and experience with those platforms. This would not be applicable to the Spark because it does not have D-Log. Also, this is not in any way or form paid for by DJI. I'll proceed with this video with the assumption that you already have a basic grasp on camera concepts such as exposure, dynamic range, f-stops, and ISO. If these concepts are a little bit too advanced, I'll be coming up with a video that will tackle these, which I'll link here once available. So first off, what is Log? Log is a picture profile equipped in most modern video cameras, which maximizes the full potential of a camera sensor, enabling it to capture wider dynamic range and more color information. I won't be delving into the implementation or the how part of this process since that in itself is a heavily technical discussion. But basically, the resulting files straight out of the camera will have much more information compared to the other profiles, but will have rolled back shadows and highlights which would make it appear flat and desaturated. Footage shot on log profiles are meant to be color graded or matched with other footage shot on either different cameras or time of day to conform to a certain artistic treatment. Panasonic has V-Log, Sony has S-Log, and of course, DJI has D-Log. A few months ago when DJI released the latest update to the D-Log profile, users reacted quite negatively to it because of the locked ISO at 500. I understood everyone's concerns because anyone familiar with a digital camera knows that shooting at a high ISO will introduce noise to the footage. In my experience, however, cameras behave differently when shooting on log profiles and have recommended native ISOs. For example, the Panasonic GH4 works best at ISO 400 and the GH5 at ISO 800 when shooting on the V-Log profile. After scouring the internet, I found a very good discussion at the forum of DJI's website where one of its tech representatives offered a good explanation for the locked ISO. It's a very long technical discussion, but if I could sum it all up, the engineers at DJI have calculated that ISO 500 is the optimal value to get the most dynamic range while protecting the highlights from clipping without introducing noise when shooting a properly exposed D-Log footage. I understood the other user's concerns because obviously our control for this function has been taken away. But at the same time, I also understand DJI's decision. Panasonic requires a paid activation for users to be able to use their vlog function, and even went as far as saying that they don't make profit out of the $100 payment for vlog. But instead, it acts as a barrier to stop people who do not know how to use the log function from using it. Because when it's not handled properly, the resulting image is horrible. In DJI's case, they locked it at the native ISO. The most common complaint obviously is noise. I understood the concerns of both sides, but of course, anything on paper doesn't necessarily equate to real life. So I decided to try it out myself, and this is what I've found. Please note that this is purely my opinion, and my conclusions are based purely on how I see it. I was not aided by any software or hardware. So after a few runs, I found that footage shot with an exposure value of zero end up being a bit underexposed. Recovering the shadows in post resulted in a noisy image. That said, I decided to use a common practice when shooting log profiles on other cameras, which is ETTR, or exposing to the right. This basically means that we need to expose one to two stops over while prioritizing the highlights from not clipping. Of course, the resulting image looked a bit overexposed straight out of the camera, but once I pulled down the shadows in post, it retained much more detail and it did not result to a noisy image. So here are my tips when shooting on D-Log. Again, this is purely my opinion, and I don't claim that this is the proper method. But of course, you could take it with a grain of salt. Starting off, I always shoot with a 180 degree shutter rule, which means if I'm shooting at 24p, I'll be using a shutter speed of 1 over 50, or 1 over 120 if I'm shooting at 60p. This also means that I'll be needing ND filters to achieve proper exposure. Personally, I use the Polar Pro ND and NDPL 6-pack. I then make smaller exposure adjustments with the aperture. I found that f5.6 is the sweet spot for the Phantom 4 Pro, and anything between 1 and 2 stops above and below it is still sharp. Beyond that, and you start to sacrifice sharpness or introduce distortion. Now as I previously mentioned, I recommend exposing 1 to 2 stops over while prioritizing the highlights. 
By prioritizing the highlights, I mean that you should make sure that the highlights are not clipped. To do this, you would need to judge your exposure using the histogram, EV meter, and zebras. You can turn on your zebras and tune it to your preference from the app menu. When selecting the D-Log profile, the image in your screen will also appear flat and desaturated, which is not really pleasant when you're flying. You can counter this by selecting this option in the app. I really don't know what it's called, but what it does is that it gives you an image with more contrast and saturation on screen, but does not get baked in into your output file. Finally, my last tip would be to avoid shooting in high contrast situations. For example, shooting in the shade when there's bright sun. Although D-Log captures a wide dynamic range, it certainly has its limitations. In these situations, you'd most likely clip either your shadows or highlights, or much worse, both. Lastly, color grade your footage as desired. Color grading is of course another long topic, but a whole lot of information about it can be found everywhere. those were some of my tips and a little bit of facts when shooting on D-Log. If you want to see more travel videos, gear reviews, and tips, you may want to consider subscribing. Alright, until next time, be well.